quarter. Training in Toledo, Ohio, representing Adamas Jiu Jitsu and Pedago Submission Fighting, Dante Leon. My fellow Canadian brother, Dante Leon, is back here at Who's Number One, making his debut at 155 pounds. Yeah, I never thought I'd see the day where I see Dante at this weight class, but he looks great. I heard the cut was easy. Looked phenomenal the weigh-ins yesterday, and he's fired up here. Take on a new weight class, a lot of new opportunities for him, and it starts tonight. And fighting out of the red corner, training in Divinopolis, Minas Gerais, representing Marcelo Garcia, Rua Alvarenga. Straight out of Mina Jedi's Ron Alvarengo representing Marcelo Garcia from the same town as Marcelo Garcia coming in to who's number one making his debut. Yeah, Alvarenga is a two-time ADCC trials gold medalist, one of the most dynamic competitors out there today. Maybe not a household name yet, but he could do that tonight with a win over Dante Leon. Let's take a look at this tale of the tape. Dante Leon, 27 years old, 5'8", 155 pounds. Juan Alvarenga, 24 <laughs> years old, 5'8", also weighed in at 155 pounds. And we are off and running. Alvarenga in the forest green kit. Pretty fresh out there, I gotta say. And Dante Leon. Up in the motocross vibes. Yeah. It's industry versus <laughs> the natural world out there. Oh, Ron, quick double leg from Ruan. Beautiful takedown by Ruan Alvarenga. <laughs> that was phenomenal timing for Ruan Alvarenga. Yeah. Good recovery from Dante to get back into a, a safe position there, close guard it looked like. Yeah, that threw me off and that threw Dante off. <laughs> that was a nice double leg attack from Juan Alvarenga. Juan Alvarenga, as you mentioned, uh, Marcelo Garcia student. One of Mo Jassim's personal favorites from the ADCC. Shout out to our man Mo. And uh, now inside the close guard of Dante Leone. Dante trying to work the Williams guard it looked like for a second there. He's got a nice little control over the shoulder. Oh, it's working as well. Yep. And a great strategy, standing right up out of that Oma Plata by Ron Alvarenga. And Dante getting, I think, back to where he'd like to be on the feet and eventually on top, I think, in his world is where he wants to go. Ruan, though, standing tall, absorbing the strength. Dante Leon and the call and tie quite nicely so far. Dante here being coached by one of the most respected American Jiu-Jitsu black belts in the game, Mr. Heath Pedigo from Pedigo Submission. Obviously, we know him from the Daisy Fresh series on Flow oh. Grappling. And Ruan with a nice little ankle pick there on Dante Leon. Ruan is impressing me. Yeah, his timing is incredible. Yes. Getting Dante on the back foot, making that leg light and picking it up and dropping him down. Nice work. Dante, though, showing off that flexibility. Yeah, I, I did not expect to see Dante's flexibility in this position. And Ruan doing a great job of escaping once again. Yeah, now that... See Dante shake his knee out a little bit there. That's kind of the consequence in times of forcing the omoplata over like that. Let's, hopefully it doesn't uh, have any effect on the match going forward. Dante Leone, he's got some who's number one wins over guys like Cody Steele, John Blank. Of course, he's a world champion in Nogi. Actually, actually won the Kasai Championship back in 2020. We're on Alvarenga, as we mentioned. ADCC trials winner in Brazil. Competed at the big show. Dante Leon had, of course, we all remember having a huge win at ADCC over Lucas Lepre a few, uh, few events ago. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is living up to the hype. Very aggressive by both competitors so far. Yeah, and the bouts here being 15 minutes is particularly interesting in this matchup. Dante. Uh, losing potentially a lot of weight ahead of this match. And we have Ron Alvarenga, who may not have had as much experience overall as Dante, or definitely doesn't, I should say. So the, let's see how that goes on, uh, how it affects the match going forward, Ricardo. Yeah, and, and we talk about experience. Dante, um, you know, down at a new weight, 155 pounds. And, and when you ask Dante, why are you doing that? Why are you down in weight? 
he simply fought everyone at 170. We couldn't get him matches anymore. <laughs> He's either defeated everyone or fought them several times. So 155 opens up a whole new ballpark, a whole new list of potential opponents. And I got to admit, I like the 155 pound Dante right now. I think Ruan does too. I mean, Ru Ruan's having a lot of success in the wrestling department, something I don't think people would have expected on paper. And uh, man, it's going great for the Marcelo Garcia athlete out there. A little high step action there. Eleven minutes, forty-one seconds left in this match. Dante Leon versus Ruan Alvarenga, battle of 155 pounds. Once again, we're here at the Criterion in Brick Town in Oklahoma City, not Brick City, Jace. Brick Town, Oklahoma, world famous. And you know, we've got a nice little crowd here. We've got uh, Lovato's representatives on the undercard, Mr. Lovato and the co-main event. And of course, uh, Mr. Heath Pedigo cornering the match here with Dante Leon. Pedigo submission fighting represented. He's gonna have one of his other students, Jacob Couch, later on competing as well. The Hillbilly Hammer fighting in a tough 185 pound match later on. Back to the action here. More stand up by both competitors. Dante with the nice little arm drag to the single leg. Good recovery though from Ruan there. Yeah. Resets in the middle. I feel like Dante's warming up now. And I think his body is warm and he's starting to feel a little bit more comfortable at this weight, doing a great job. Ruan with the koala, koala guard, guard pull. Now Dante on top here. This is something he's so good at there. Slapping on that straight arm bar from top, working a pass at the same time. This is much more than Dante Liam many people expect to see out there tonight. Let's take a look at our judges favor so far. And the judges favor Ruan Alvarenga thus far. But right now, Dante is in a great dominant position. Yeah, this is, is a great reversal of fortune for Dante Leon here. And he is gonna make every second count. He's in his position. He's gonna weigh on Ruan, not gonna force anything. Definitely does not want to give a position. Let's see what happens here. The legs are open. Can Dante solidify a position? It looks like Dante's got double unders and a really good passing position here. He's going to look to leg pummel to free his right leg. Ron trying to, you know, work that left leg of Dante, trying to get control, trying to bring it back inside the middle. But Dante doing a great job now looking for a body lock and Ruan trying to get a reversal here. Oh, Dante, Dante gets the back. Shucks him over the top, chasing the back. Now this was an incredible sequence yes. with Dante Leon. Body lock is on. Uh, wow. A reversal of fortune. Ruan won the judges' favor, but Dante won the exchange and now on the back with the body lock. Probably no better position to be in in an Ogi match than the body lock in the back position here. Oh, look at him working. The wrist underneath the chin there. This might be over the jaw, but Dante has a mind. He's going to squeeze. Dante Leon gets the submission. Rear naked choke from the back. What a match. Ruan was aggressive with those takedowns, but Dante showed his experience and grit in that good old Canadian aggressive comeback. Dante Leon gets to the back, gets the body lock, gets the submission. Oh, there we see our, the final moments of yeah. that match, but there are so many exchanges uh, worth looking at. I know I'm going to be replaying uh, the better parts of that match over and over again. From the incredible wrestling of Ruan Alvarenga to the counter of Dante Leon there at the end, the passing. Once Dante got on top, it was kind of all over, and uh, he made it. He made that exchange count. So Dante Leon is not an athlete you can make a mistake with because he will make it count. Absolutely, Dante Leon's got the experience. He's got the accolades. He's got the wins here. Who's number one? Great debut by Ruan Alvarenga. Looking forward to having him back here at this event. But congratulations, Dante Leon. Another submission win here on who's number one. And your winner, by submission, out of the blue corner, Dante Leon. Big
big win for Dante Leon, making his 155. Texas representing BT Ethan Krellenstein. Ethan Krellenstein, originally from Montreal, Quebec, now fighting out of Austin, Texas. The marvelous mullet man from Montreal, <laughs> now training at the B team here in Austin. Yeah, Ethan has a great game. I, I think we're gonna see he's usually this knee shield to the wrestle up. I think the key for him, the whole contest, is get to the turtle position, which he's very good from, and getting to the, that way he gets to the back. That's his route to the back. He's use these wrestle ups to get to the turtle. Hey, out of the red corner, training in Toledo, Ohio, representing Adamas Pedago. Dante Leon. Dante Leon, originally from Windsor, Ontario, Canada, now fighting out of Toledo, Ohio, representing Adamas Jiu Jitsu and Pedagogy Submission Fighting. He's here for that 155 pound title. Yeah, he's exceptionally skilled. He's got, he, just get, he just keeps getting better. He's already got great wrestling. He's, he, he had a great inverted game very early on in his career. And now he's looked, he's really put that together well with, with almost everything. He's wrestling games and game. All right, let's take a look at the tail of the tape in this lightweight title fight. Ethan Krellston, 29 years old, 5'8", 153.8 pounds, ranked number seven in the flow graphic rankings. Dante Leon, 28 years old, 5'8", weighed in at 155 pounds, ranked number two. This is it, this is for the unified title of grappling. Who's number one? Ready, ready, fight! Here we go. The Battle of Northern Grapplers. We got Quebec versus Ontario. Ethan in on a single leg, coming out very aggressive against Dante. Dante with a nice little counter, attacking the leg of Ethan right away. This is getting fast and furious in this battle of Canadian lightweights. Yeah, that was a nice, it was a nice shot right there. He yeah. got caught deep and then Dante just really beautiful counter, deep in on the leg. and. And use that nice, use that attack very well to just come to the top. Now, we'll see Ethan. This is sort of where he lives in this position here, and hits wrestle ups from it all the time. But there's that left arm over wrapping the leg. You'll see he'll most likely try to come out on a single again. Dante's there. It is Ethan up on the yep. single leg. Dante with a counter once again. Yep, again, very nice counter. Yeah. That inside Sinkako position, did it real well. Ethan's got to clear this leg. That's what he's trying to do. He's, he's trying to get his right leg underneath that leg. Ethan had an amazing match against Fabricio Andre in his last who's number one uh, competition. Was able to surprise the Brazilian, getting to the back and getting the rear naked choke. And Dante Leon having that awesome battle with Huron Alvarenga in the last who's number one. Yeah. And, you know, as we mentioned, Dante in a new weight class, it's been really hard to get Dante matches at 170, which he was original weight class, simply because he's fought them all. But now at a new weight class of 155, he's got new opponents, new challenges, and he's looking to get that 155 pound title. Yeah, I like the way Dante used that again, sort of that cut back or that scissor leg, almost scissor leg takedown to, to just use it for a, a takedown. I mean, he, he got in the legs deep, untied his legs. Here he is up passing. This knee shield position here for Ethan. Ethan needs to keep that hand right there on his right side at bay. He's got to win the battle of the wrist on that right side. He's trying to get inverted underneath. Dante now inverting, trying to get Control of the legs of Dante Leon. Dante doing a great job controlling that knee shield. Trying to pin that head and arm. Yeah, and you can see you could see a little while ago where Dante just moved backwards and changed the angle of his right shin and it just bang, it just kills that that reverse de la Hiva hook and basically stops that inversion process. It really shuts that down. You see if Ethan kicks that left leg forward and it comes up. 
Ethan up on a, trying to get to that dogfight position. He is. Nice little wizard and counter by Dante Leon. We saw a lot of the half guard um, to the dogfight today. We've seen it about three or four times already. They're bringing it back. Yeah, dogfight's a good position. I, it, no one's done it really today, but uh, from that dogfight, yeah. you can take that arm and go behind the we leg. We saw a lot of attempts. Yeah, yeah, that's right. There. You could get up, you get behind the leg, and it stops that Uchimata because it really lets you roll some a person through. Um, I mean, Gary used it on Dante when they fought in uh, several years back. It's a very good position from the dogfight. It makes it really difficult to get roll to get countered with that Uchimata. There's Ethan on the leg there, big over wrap. Dante controlling from top position. These guys have not stopped moving no. from the start of this match. Just constantly working for position. Dante looking. You notice as soon as he tries to invert, Dante uh, turning his right knee downward just to block that and then goes and hits that head and arm. And now Ethan attacking the leg or using it to get some space to come back up on top of Dante. Dante again going back to that knee cut position, fending him off. A uh, similar methodology to what we saw with Carlos Enrique, just different positioning. Yeah, yeah. Working the Dante's fighting for that right underhook, but Ethan's doing a very good job of keeping it pummeled to the inside. Now he's in on the leg. This is another tough one to call because Ethan has been attacking quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have the judges' favor in about 10 seconds here, but I, this... You know, that. Dante said they weren't going to be doing some artsy fartsy jujitsu, and it's been all aggression since Just the beginning. Stay. And it looks like red. judges are favoring red, which is Dante Leone. Yeah. He's had those two very nice counters, sort of controlling where the contest went. Nice arm drag to the double leg by Dante. Yeah, that was very nice. Ethan trying to get underneath there, but Dante shutting it down. Now he's going to get into the leg under 50 50. But Dante winning the battle of clearing the legs and staying on the top. Nothing, nothing was, he was, Ethan really wasn't able to off balance him long enough to get his leg and hold it into the air and then clear his legs. Eight minutes and 55 seconds left in this match. Dante Leon up on the judges' favor so far. On top of Ethan Krellenstein. Just stalking. And Ethan just not letting go of those legs. He wants a leg entanglement. Whether to sweep or submit, he keeps working for it. There it is again. He's got to watch his back, though. You're right, Ricardo. There he's going to try to get in on this leg again. His hips are pretty good now. Dante gets around the hips. That would be trouble, but yeah, now he's flattening the hips. Got to keep that hip flat on the ground. And pummel is that, that right leg right there. Yeah, very good to pummel that in. He can use his other foot to back it up. Now Ethan's in trouble. He is getting smashed and put into the Katagatami. Yeah, this is big problems now. Ethan rolling out. Yep, that's a good idea, actually, for him to roll out. Here's this arm in rear naked that we were talking about earlier. Yep, got Dante it. Dante Leo gets the submission over Ethan Krellenstein. Yep. And is the who's number one 155 pound lightweight champion. Defeats fellow Canadian Ethan Krellenstein in a very, very tough match. Very back and forth. And Dante Leone 
gets the win, gets the submission, and is your winner. Let's take a look at the replay here. Ethan Carlson, Dante Leon. We knew this was going to be an aggressive match. They both said no artsy fartsy jiu jitsu today. Here's the arm drag to the double leg. I do believe her. there it is. A beautiful double leg by Dante Leon. Gets the top position. A lot of smashing. Was able to get that head and arm. Yep. And got the choke from the back with yep. the head and arm. Right. That is a tight squeeze, Sean Williams. Yes, it is. That arm and rear naked strangle there from the op inverted Katagatami, essentially. All right, we're going to kick it back to our MC for the official decision here. And your winner by submission. And new, who's number one lightweight champion, Dante Leo. Dante Leo is your new, who's number one 155 pound lightweight champion, defeating fellow Canadian Ethan Kralstein, the legendary Shaji Ribeiro, who's in attendance. He's going to put the strap on this young man. <laughs> On the Canadian. What a way to win the title. Yeah, I mean, he looked fantastic. I mean, even Ethan. He team Elmo at 76 kilograms, representing Team Al Leone, Kenta Iwamoto. This one's going to be a banger. Dante's had a lot to say about how he feels this matchup's going to go so far this week. Yeah, this is the final match in this seven match series. Final face off, Kenta Iwamoto of Japan. Representing Al Leone, it's going to take on ADCC bronze medalist 2022, Dante Leon. And I, I, I've been asking myself, I've been wondering why Dante is so hyped for this match against Kenta. He's been asking for it. The word on the street is that him and Cole. And from Team Adolfo, Dante Leon. Dante Leon and Cole Abate are both in at 76. And it's up to the team coach to make the choice as to who faces off with the opposite team, right? So Dante basically was like, yo, Mo, I want Kenta. And I, I, I wonder why, because Dante's not the kind of guy to call people out, but he does love a challenge. If he sees something in the game of Kenta Uemoto, that he's like, I want to beat that guy. Well, and Dante is just, he's in a different headspace these days. In my opinion, he's the most underrated grappler in the world. And you, you think, how can a guy be underrated? He's had such a good resume over the last couple of years, but people still sleep on Dante. Are they, they just don't bring him up. Wow. They just don't bring him up in these conversations. Yeah, you be, yeah, you can't forget this guy. He's, he's had such a career, you know, breakout scene, uh, breakout on the scene as a brown belt, came into black belt fully formed and immediately showed that he was world class and has competed in a, man, it's crazy to think that you've seen him compete as high as 185, and now he's kind of found a home in this, uh, I mean, most recently he competed like, you know, 10 days ago at 155, you know, beating Ethan Crowlinston to take the Who's number one title. In a and, dominant performance oh, as well. so solid. I just feel like Dante has matured into such an incredible grappler. It's a, a very interesting blend of like that tough Midwest, hard-nosed, grinding, wrestling, in-your-face style with really nice slick technique and that's a very interesting combination and he's got the personality to really be a star in this sport oh that's very interesting dante choosing to pull guard with that i thought we would see dante get up and wrestle for a while going into the underhook on the other side looking for a choiba wow yeah, he really sliding is. through but he missed it but yeah, he's gonna be on the leg attack to, though can the manager just get his elbow out of danger but not really out of danger in this position Don't you sleep on Kenta, man. No, I was I was about to say that, you know, I, we asked ourselves why Dante was so eager for the match with Kenta, and I think that you're talking about underrated grapplers, you know? And Kenta, man, people forget that he is a two-time ADCC trials winner, a two-time ADCC veteran, and one of the top submission grapplers out of Japan competing on the on the international scene. And uh yeah, he's, he's picked up a few good wins here and there. He's picked up some good, really solid wins against opponents, but not so much that he's a household name. champions, man. He has, you know. Points. You're right, not a household name, but, but very formidable. 
you know, I'm, I'm trying to think back to his ADCC run. Am I right in thinking his first match was against JT Torres? JT Torres, and he gave JT all he wanted to. Yeah, the, the returning oh, look champion. At this, though. Oh, that's a nice word from Dante. <laughs> Wrestling up and onto this rear body lock. And look how he distributes his weight with those double underhooks. Just incredible connection. Yeah, he's going full human backpack here. Kind of off to the side, though. You think that he's uh, in danger of uh, losing that position, Brandon? As long as he's got those double underhooks, he's going to be okay. He's hanging that weight. There he goes now. And he's going to go for the kill right away. He's going to look to close the show. <laughs> oh, man. Dante's a killer. Kenti Wamoto trains out of Japan, based out of Japan, however, does like to travel over to Austin, Texas to train with the B-team guys. And he has a bit of a reputation in that training room as being not quite unchokable, but about as difficult a guy to choke as you can possibly get. Very, very thick, strong neck. Oh, look at that you, turn that he makes with that Nelson style. I love that power half. Dude, can we see him go to a twister right here? I mean, I know that's not going to be his favorite position, but that was the perfect spot for it. Chooses to go to the hooks instead. Got the two. You mentioned about Dante down. going for the twister. Man, he's a meat and potato scrapper. You oh, know? you know what? The twister's actually illegal in this rule set. Oh, you're right. You're right. No spy marks. Yeah. Um, but it's not Dante's style, man. He, he 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 even said it like 10 days ago, right? That he doesn't like the artsy fartsy stuff. He <laughs> just wants to go out and beat you. He just wants to go out and beat you down and submit you. You mentioned about his personality, actually. And Dante, he's Canadian, you know, he's pretty quiet. He doesn't talk a lot, but when he does, he's usually pretty direct with his words, and it's usually like, no, I'm going to beat that guy, you know? He's funny, too. He man. is. A minute to go in this opening round of our final matchup here between Team Modolfo. They're up 5-1 right now against Team Aleone. Dante is not rushing anything here, right? He's got the, he's in full control. Final 30 seconds, kind of this match more or less. And why rush things, right? Yeah, creating a good angle. I'll try to slip under the chin. Iwamoto does a nice job surviving in that position. And he only has to survive 15 seconds because at the end of that period, Reset, one minute break, and it's right back to a neutral restart. And I kind of like that about this format, right? That you know. Oh, switching off of the arm lock. You can, you can get dominated in that first period, but you get a, Still you get win. a shot of redemption in the next rounds because it's right back to, to square one. A little replay. Look at that wrestler, Brandon. You like Beautiful that, right? work. Right into the double unders. And then you just use that double under to establish a good chest-to-back connection and ride him all the way into the single hook. Then the double hooks. Score his points. Two Some for the takedown, three for the back. 5-0 round for Dante. Never really got close to the choke, though. Made, you know what I like, though? He made a good play towards that arm bar thing, and he got aggressive. Took a risk, opened up, just just for, to try the submission as the round ended out. Something I just wanted to point out quickly is you'll have noticed that every competitor on the mats tonight, they're all wearing the exact same outfits. They all have their team uniform on of shorts and rash guard, but every competitor is also wearing spats. And I feel like that smart move from the organizers here because uh, round two. I'm not sure that Dante would have been able to finish that wrestle-up sweep had Kenton not been wearing the spats. Well, that's a very interesting point, actually. Especially using that kind of scoop grip that he had and kind of like hooking over the far knee with his hand. Yeah, very, very interesting point. That's a... a level change in head clash good there. Oh, Kenton getting in. Gets yeah. the takedown on Dante. That's oh, going to be that's two. two. That's two, absolutely. But look at the foot coming oh, over the top gonna here. going to play some rubber guard. Looking for the go-go blotter. Oh, Kenton rips it out. But hey, that's a that's an interesting strategy from Kenta. He's like, I'm not messing around here. Boom, straight forward, two on the board, less than 30 seconds or 30 seconds and, and change into the match. Different mm -hmm. Kenta. You said no artsy fartsy stuff from Dante, and here he comes playing for a go go plata, <laughs> and he gets put under pressure. <laughs> well, you got to do what you got to do yeah, to win, that's right? right baby. <laughs> 
Hey, that, that threat worked though because it, it forced Kenda to break posture and to come up and that, that got him to restart back into this position and Dante works really well from open guard. He's got a great uh, he's, good, uh, he's got great inversions, he's really good movement from bottom. You know, he's a compact frame kind of guy, you know, he doesn't have particularly long uh, limbs and actually from bottom, you know, that, that can be pretty good, right? You can spin underneath pretty easily. This he actually told me an interesting story about ahead. how he learned to invert when he was 13 years of age in a private lesson with none other than Cobrinha. Uh, that's a good guy to learn it First from. <laughs> person to ever teach him how to invert and go for a ground ball. It's incredible. Here he goes. He's going to try to make an entry onto the other leg with this inversion. Nice play. Kenta, though, doing a good job keeping his knee line. And he's not so quick to bail danger. out of it this time either, right? He's yeah. hanging out here, whereas before, mm. when uh, when Dante went for that kind of position, Kenta was up and out and conceded that, that reversal. A weird ankle lock grip, but Kenda's leg position is way off. Yeah, can't he, quite see from this angle. Right? He doesn't really have the depth of the grip that he needs against the ankle to turn this into that attacking straight ankle. I mean, his his he's back just using is it to prevent the back take. Right yeah, his now. back is exposed, but I'm trying to see. I think his right hook is active because the left leg seems. It's right. inside the legs, but it's just hanging out there. So if Dante can address that hook, he's like straight on the back from here, but kind of hard to see exactly from this angle. And now you can see Kenta starting to feel a little unsure about his position, thinking about changing it up. Reaching that right hand back to the tricep. Going to try to pull Dante's grip out of there so he can attack this straight ankle. If he can get Dante's left hand out of position, he may be able to put some pressure on that. Dante using his right hand to frame away, keep that leg out. Something curious I just noticed is that the coaching chair, right, there's, there's been a switch that earlier it was Daiki Yonakura coaching in Japanese for Kenta, and, uh, and now you've got Joseph Chen actually uh, calling out instructions. And this is better for Kenta now. He's in a much better position here than he was earlier. There was, there was risk of back exposure there. And, well, he was using that hook instead of changing off to the DOA, which is almost a death sentence if you don't already have the, the heel hook locked up. It's a death sentence. It's just a back exposure or a leg drag pretty much every time against a guy of this caliber. Look at that slide through. But he was using, like you said, he was using that hook on the inside to prevent it. Now Kenta making a move underneath. He's not let go of that ankle at all in this entire time, you know. He's not using, oh there, he's changed the grips now, but he, he wasn't using it as a, a real threat for submission at any time, but it was such an important controlling grip of Dante, but oh, now the grip has switched, and Dante is again on the back, chest to back. Beautiful work, Dante on. So we're in the final minute of this round, but he hasn't got the points because Iwamoto found a way out, he's back on top. So even though Dante had a brief moment of chest-to-back connection, wasn't able to sink hooks or a body triangle in, and therefore is still down 2-0 in this match. Yeah, we were talking about the international flavor of these teams, and uh, I think Alioni is best described as like a pan-Asian team of representatives from various nations, as you said. Singapore, China, Australia, technically is Australasia, kind of like region of the world, and then you've got... Oh, look at this, a reversal! Right there. Dante again getting busy, hunting for that back. Last 20 seconds. Can he sink hooks in, get points? Or will Kenta just... No, Kenta's gonna deny oh, him! Wow, Kenta with a great play, digging himself out, saving those points. Nice late stage defense there from Iw Iwamoto. Time's gonna run out. Okay, very interesting. One round apiece. I wanna see that, that blast, double, that Jordan Burrow style double the Kenta shot to open the round. Oh, it is the Goga Plata attempt that as much created space as anything and took a little of that pressure off. 
Yeah, really hoping we would see that blast double that just took Dante across the mat. Kenta looked great on these top positions, though. And just constantly, like you said, utilizing that grip, that overhook grip on the ankle to prevent Dante from moving to his back. Dante made a couple of great plays, but just not able to get the score. Yeah, I, I'm very impressed by Kenta's ability in, in both sequences in this match. That Dante got chest back and Kenta was able to deny him any points. A very, very resilient grappler, that's for sure. And here we go, start of the third and final five-minute round in this match. And now Dante sits. No negative for, uh, for sitting earlier in the match. Kind of curious as well, I just wanted to mention, you may have been able to pick it up on the mics, I'm not sure, but there is a huge group of Kazakh children behind us, Brandon, who are just constantly calling out Kenta's name. They've, they've taken to him, man. They've decided <laughs> he's their guy. <laughs> Minute and a half till points. Kenta looked great on top position in that second round. Looking to drive through on this pass, Dante framing away, trying to create some space, but this body lock pass of Iwamoto creating a lot of problems for Dante. He's I'm not sure that Kenta's got his hands linked. I'm kind oh, of he does. Yeah, he's got the S grip. He he's got oh, the S grip. That's what it is. Okay, yeah. But okay. penalty against Iwamoto, a little rough. I, I feel like he's working, you know? The body lock is a, is a grinding pass. It's not, not a, it's not a quick one sometimes, right? But they, they want to see action. This is a short five-minute round. You have to keep moving, so. And this is huge. Iwamoto, if he doesn't do something right here, he's going to get hit with a negative, and then all the pressure falls into his lap. Oh, there's oh, the step. That, that was right on the, the end of that 20-second stalling period. Oh, and yes. they give it to him. They've called, a, they've called a penalty against Iwamoto, which is actually a negative point for not being active enough from that top position. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with that call. Hey, you know what? The, the referees are here. They, they, they're trying to keep him busy. It's like, I, I, I get it. I'm, I'm going to say that, but I'm not sure I agree with it either. Oh, and here they come. Hitting Second, him with another one. Yeah, stalling warning. Yeah, Kenta is he's in a very strong control position, but that's the body lock pass for you, right? He's 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 just not going forward. And you're gonna hit him with another one. Did they call the stall? No, off they didn't. Right I think they, yeah, they they just gave him a moment of reprieve. Oh my him. goodness! Oh, Dante gets the, maybe gonna get the reversal out of this. Bust yes, the he hands will. free. He's gonna get two out of that. Very nice work from uh, kind of catching that leg with the scoop and coming up on top. Looked like Kenta was going to get to the back there for a second, but Dante, that was very well timed. So that effectively puts Dante up by three. Two for the sweep, and then he got the negative. Scored against Iwamoto while oh, he was trying to hold Ma. Man, I, I feel like that was maybe a mistake by Iwamoto in yeah. giving up his back in that kind of transition right there. Dante's oh, going high see. on the arm. Are we going to see another one of these tangled arm locks from the rear triangle? Oh, that is locked in. Reverse triangle. Oh! Oh, there it is. Dante Leon. Oh, he pulls out the gun. He fires over it on Leon. Oh, yeah. He pointed straight at the opposing team. It was like bang, bang, baby. A little bit of swagger from Dante Leon. Dante Leon all bar win in the third and final round of that. Uh, he's like, yeah, he's still got something to say to those guys over there. He's pointing over at him and he's like, yeah, took out your boy. Yeah, they're getting a little bit chippy. Man, team matchup number one. Adilov, Abdul Jalil. Abdul Jalil coming back. Saw him in action yesterday. Actually lost his match by technical submission, if you remember, Brandon. He was the guy who got his foot caught in the rash guard. Yes. 
was uh, very controversial. Consuming. Coach was very upset. Yeah, yeah, they, they were not happy about that. But let's see if that's a factor coming into this match. If that injury is lingering at any point, you know, 24, 24 hours later. And a little roster change here for um, for Team Adolfo. Dante Leon stepping up to 83 kilograms, replacing Isaac Michelle, who we've been told is um, maybe a little banged up from his two matches yesterday. Dante did compete uh, under 76 yesterday, but he's coming up to 83. And Dante's an ice cold killer. Got that Canadian ice water in his veins, right? He does. Round one. All right, here we go. In the red, Adelov. In the green, Dante Leon. Sitting early. Dante Ooh, a good very contact good guard player. Adelov. Yes, it was. But Dante able to save that. And you know, Dante can really can do it all. You know, that yeah, is a absolutely. very interesting thing. He is a uh, Canadian, but has been based in the Midwest for many, many years. Training in Ohio has access to some of the best wrestlers the Midwest has to offer. Has uh, made great advantage of that. You know, training with some very, very good wrestlers. He, he can definitely hang there. But great guard game. Great submission attacks, top and bottom, very well-rounded. And I want you to just notice something, how the intensity of the grip exchanges. Mm. Every time that Dante goes, check that out. Every time that Dante goes to set a grip, Adilov just exploding and refusing. Again, if it's not my grips, then we're not going to have any grips at all. That's the mentality of these guys. There's no feeling out here, right? They've no. gone straight at it, and they've locked horns, and it's extremely tense. Dante, no stranger to competition at the absolute highest levels of grappling. Bronze medal at the 2022 ADCC World Championships, probably one of his biggest accolades, of course, a Nogi World Champion as well. IBJJF World Nogi Championships. Dante taking a two-on-one grip on the hand, and tries to sit under and met immediately with a cross face. Dante now looking to work up. Waiter sweep trying to get into his deep sweep half. Out the back, onto a leg. One thing I want to mention as well is just, you know, Dante going out 83, not a big deal because, as we mentioned yesterday, he's competed as low as 155, as high as 185. Look at this head pressure. Bad intention behind that. So even if there is any kind of size advantage here for Adelov, Dante can handle it. He's absolutely. He's well used to going up against guys who are physically bigger than him, but. Pound for pound, Dante Leon is considered one of the strongest guys in all of grappling. If you've ever seen his powerlifting videos, it'll tell you a lot. A student of the Westside Barbell kind of system of lifting. Louis Simmons and the, the greats there. Ad Adelov is really insisting on passing to that same side and he's very, very intense with it. And they're gonna start the stalling clock wow. on Adilov on the top. Yeah, for taking a half-second breather after a pass attempt. That's and I think they've already shook the stalling off. Yeah. But just a reminder that he's got to keep that action going. Dante looking to dig this left side underhook while he's playing the knee shield. Now with the frame. Two on one grip. As we approach the two-minute mark, the first round of matchup number three. Dante not really able to find any purchase so far. There's just nothing. There's just no openings here. There's nothing to hold on to. Well, there's no, he's not winning the gripping. Right. And that was very similar in pretty much all the matches that we've seen earlier, especially in the Alioni versus uh, Team Nurmagomedov. It was very, very similar. The guys were playing from bottom. They just could not hold on to anything. And I've, I've got to wonder if Adilov can keep this pace. Right. Though, is Dante notoriously which is an infinite gas tank? I'm sure Adelov is extremely well conditioned, but you're right; it's a high pace to maintain. Yeah, and he's doing—he's carrying most of the load and the work right now. Dante now 
using that knee shield to kick through into the underhooks, bails on it, just did not feel like he could do the dominant work that he needed to do. Dante trying to invert through. That's nice, catches and, the second oh, angle. does not get the sweep though. That was smart. Had that, what he wanted for just a second. He came up, you could see that kind of he considered chasing after him, but he was so close to the edge of the mat, he's like, I'm not gonna waste the energy. He sat back down. And it shows you that he's still got confidence in his guard play right here. Like, that even though Adilov is putting a lot of pressure on him and playing very aggressively, that Dante doesn't necessarily feel that he's going to get past, and right. that he's going to find an opportunity there. And he's looking to dig that underhook again, try to turn it into a shoulder crunch. Adilov weaving those feet in and out of the guard. Saw a little attempt at a windshield wiper from top on uh, from Adilov there to try and step over that bottom leg, but Dante's got a very sticky hook there. This match is going to go 0 0. We've got about 10 seconds left. And honestly, as a judge, and I don't see the match as a judge. I see it as a commentator. It's not the same thing. But from my perspective, very difficult match to call, very even. But did, Ad did Adelov really have Dante in any danger there? No. No. And Dante was the only one who had an attempt at coming up and of balancing his opponent and initiating any kind of real attack as we see right here that but, was more but than really once, yeah. just just no gain though from the attack by dante no if anything adilov showing that you know i don't care if this guy inverts and tries to go underneath me he's not going to get anywhere with it that was the time that he caught the second ankle and you saw dante briefly consider coming up and chasing after him but he's so close to the edge of the mat he's like ah. A lot of pressure on Dante right here. A lot of pressure. If he doesn't win this match, Madolfo goes down three to zero. And then it's just Universal needing to find one more. And it's, yeah, yeah. Three in a row would be a bad, bad look. Happened in the last matchup though. Aleone went up three to zero, three quick leg locks, and then ended up losing four in a row. Dante. Choosing to pull the guard and then try to play the guard one more time. Okay, I think we're going to see a similar, I similar kind look, of strategy here from both guys. I think it's going to really similar. Yeah, you're yeah. Right. I mean, maybe Dante's. He feels like, okay, you know, I actually I got my openings. I can do this. I'm going to keep at it. Certainly, Adelov hasn't really made any solid, solid attempts at passing For just sure. yet. For sure, Dante's showing that his guard pretty much unpassable. And he's tried to snatch up that shoulder crunch a couple of times off of the double unders position. Ooh, Dante tried to get into an overhook game there, maybe thinking about going to his butterfly guard. Just constantly with this quarter guard pressure from the top though for Adilov. Dante looking to scoop underneath the leg with his right hand instantly gets framed out. Uh oh. Oh, here's a scoop grip. Yeah. This could be trouble here. Dante gaining a little ground now. I think Adilov overcommitted with that Lost entry the right there. And again, Adilov just kicking out and refusing. I like that as well that he bails, but he doesn't dance around. He's like, boom, palm strike to Dante's head, straight back in. Yeah, he's just refusing the attacks. He's not really disengaging. Yeah. Yeah, there's a difference. There's, there is a big difference. Big, big difference in disengaging and, and taking a breather and trying to hang out out there. He's, he's not shying away from, from getting hands on with Dante, that's for sure. And now we're on to the points. Big moments right here for Team Modolfo and for Universal Fighters. This match right here in the middle could prove to be the deciding factor, depending on how the rest of it plays out. Dante into the overhook, and again, denied. 
Dante going to invert now. That's Can he come up on top? That's not bad. He's got his butt to the mat finally. Oh, and he's got a good grip. He's got a really good grip on the back of the... Oh no, he's lost, lost it again. Oof. Dante not really looking frustrated though. It's not, no. not the same thing we saw out of the Luke Griffith match. Very true. No, no, Dante's patient for sure. And you know, he's not gonna get disheartened by the fact that, uh, that Adelov has managed to find a way out from those, uh, those entries. Howell, I gotta ask, do you think Madolfo underestimated these guys? Do you think, do you think they just expected to come and walk through them? Oh, here's a good entry. Oh, Yeah, we can use this to come up. You can use this to come up easy. Get a score if you want. You can get a score easy here. Yes, yeah, get to the shoulders. He wants to leg lock. Stay safe. Pop 
upper scissor legs off balance. He doesn't want to enter. He doesn't want to enter. Perfect time to come up. One, two, that's two, Dante. Beautiful. 540 to go. 540 to go. Two points, one advantage. He starts tripping the grip on feet. Gonna want to come to his knees. We already know this. Five minutes. Waiting for that wrestle up. We know that. Four minutes, four minutes. Yes, we're good now. We're chilling. Nice. It's there, it's there all day, it's there all day. You can punch that left hand through. Another advantage. That's a back take. Connect hands, connect hands, double unders, double unders, double unders. Three minutes. Two points, four advantage. It's on him, it's on him now.
Two minutes. Two minutes. We're up. I'm taking this for Ashy here if you want to. He just wants to pull through for D-Bar. One ten, Dante. One ten, nice. That's four. One minute. that leg, get that foot to the floor. Just stay safe, stay safe, stay safe. Feet are safe, we're good. 30 seconds.
that's the most like weighted final of today, I believe. <laughs> yeah, the most interesting for sure, especially with the weight discrepancy. Two Nogi World Champions, a lot of weight classes apart normally. But it's very, very cool for Dante to go up to super yeah. heavy and challenge himself in this way. He's a competitor who's always looking for new challenges, always looking for the toughest matches he can find. Dante trying to maintain a connection, pull guard, gets to the bottom. Another competitor who uses the knee shield position from bottom, trying to wrestle up now. Great job by Dante sitting up on that single leg. Yeah, he's really good at uh, like pulling guard and wrestle up. So I don't know if for the bunch is a, is a smart idea to stay standing in front of him. I think he has now that he's not like making like side to side. I think that's better. Dante on top, trying to stay heavy, like you said, puts both knees on the mat now. Dante using that, that knee shield. And like you said, I think it's important to reiterate how good Dante is at off-bouncing his opponents, coming up on single legs and finishing sweeps in that manner. Dante looking for the arm drag. Dante, a two-time Nogi World Champion, won in the middleweight division, and then 2022 dropped down to lightweight, where he won his second title. Devontae Johnson, also a Nogi World Champion. Eight minutes to work, bro. Two in. I don't know what Dante's weight is right now, but I'm pretty sure it's not up to super heavy. <laughs> I would, I would say, I would say like around 190, maybe. Nice. Great work to come up, and he's in a great position. He's in a leg drag. Drag already. Looking for a back exposure. Beautiful position here for Dante Leon. Steps over the legs. He the wants to get his pass points too. Uh, the the watch is having to fight to keep his back on the mat because Dante was looking for a back exposure. Dante up two points for that sweep. One advantage. Dante's got some really beautiful guard passing too. One thing that was really impressive at the 2022 Nogi Worlds is the way he would switch sides. Dante nearly sweeps back. Back to the feet. Dante started the match pulling guard. See if he tries to exchange some takedowns or if he wants to pull guard again. Dante pulls. Nice how they want to the hand fight now, like forcing Dante to pull guard. Yeah, it looked like Dante wanted to stay on the feet until mm -hmm. Devante got that strong two on one grip. Like you said, almost forced him to pull guard. Doing a good job hand fighting, stripping grips. Trying to establish a connection to Devante. Who's an excellent guard passer in his own right. 100%. We always, he always liked to look for reaction like he's doing now. I think against the gun should be better, like a little bit side to side. Like he's doing now. Look, now he's getting closer. Amazing job changing sides. 
putting Dante on his back. Because if he stays square, Dante has the ability to wrestle up. So that's why I'm saying that if he changes that side like he did, then they get closer to get something going. and 30 seconds into this super heavyweight final, the 2023 Pan No Gigi2 Championships. Dante Leone on bottom. He's up 2-0 over Devontae Johnson. Dante representing Daisy Fresh. Pedigo submission fighting. Devontae representing Uni Jiu-Jitsu. Dante trying to sit up on that single leg. Now this has make a little bit of difference, but you, you see like how Dante was really quick and tried to come up. They want to smartly using the, the size. They're not going back heavy on his knees. This is more that side to side passing exactly. now. Exactly. That you talked about, Bruno, from Devante. When he does side to side, he makes really hard to dunch in on them. But when he stops in front of dunch, then he makes, like, not easy, but like, dunch has more possibilities of coming up. left super heavyweight final Dante Leon still in the lead but only by two points is there anything you'd like to see Devante do to utilize his size advantage more Bruno well, I, like really now because he, because he's losing the match like he has to be a little bit more aggressive because Dunch is very good very good defensively as well so he needs to create situations where he's gonna catch like Dunch in transition of defense. Otherwise, like gonna be really hard like to get like on the side control like chest to chest, right? Because now he's losing two to zero. Dante trying to stay heavy. Dante doing such a good job pummeling his legs to the inside position, maintaining his distance, using his frames. And that's why I said that he has, he has to be a little bit more aggressive on that side to side because in a, in a high level, like, you need to catch quick transition of, like, defensive systems to be able to score. Like, like we saw a lot, like, on, on matches earlier, either was for scoring or for submissions. Less than three minutes left now. Dante's coach calling for some more pressure from the top position. Dante underhooking the leg. Switches back to a knee shield. Devante's corner calling for a guard pass or a back take. Yeah, because Which is what he'll need to get himself ahead of the Because a guard pass can lead to a back day. The problem is that he needs to put that pressure like now to be able to, to make that happen. Two minutes left, folks. Oh, sorry. It looks like an accident on ah, ah, fuck. Kick ah, to the face. Ah, fuck. As Dante was trying to pummel his legs and strip some of the grips on his feet, looks like he accidentally caught Devante in the face with his foot. Let's go to a quick break, and we will be right back with the Super Heavyweight Final.
more. We're back at the 2023 Pan Nogi Jiu Jitsu Championships. This is the super heavyweight final. Devontae Johnson took a little bit of a kick to the face accidentally by Dante Leon, but he's good to go now. And we have Dante Leon up by two points with less than two minutes left. This is a battle of two world Nogi champions. They won't just like put in pressure. But he has to be able to beat that shield. Looks like he's trying to walk to his right to try and put Dante's hips flat on the mat, try and beat that knee shield, like exactly. you mentioned. Dante just does a good job of readjusting his angle. Really good. He's, I think, because like he's known by takedown, passing. People like don't give or uh, how good is this guard game. Like especially defensively. He's been very impressive at the Pan Nogi. Fighting oh, really, really big guys. Half guard. Dante trying to get Dante flat in the half guard. Doing a great job. Dante trying to get that bottom knee free. Very tight position, Devante is so physically strong. Yes. Good cross face. He, he needs to bring his right knee out. He needs to bring his right knee out to be able to pass. Yeah, he needs a guard pass, trying to sprawl. Dante keeping his legs locked. 20 seconds left now. Dante just has to hold on to this half guard. Devante needs the guard pass. Don't you have the good frame from the hips there? And Devante needs to free his right knee to be able to pass. Five seconds left, and it looks like Dante Leon is going to be your super heavyweight champion here at the 2023 Pan No Gi Jiu Jitsu Championships. This is wild. Went up multiple divisions. Competed in the open class, didn't get the results he wanted there, but he wins the super heavyweight division. This is pretty insane, Bruno. 
It was like if you go back in the day, that's like how like legendary Salo Ribeiro made the history, like winning world championships in multiple divisions. Now maybe Dunch can do that in the Nogi. Beautiful performance. Dante Leone of Pedigo Submission Fighting is your super heavyweight champion at the 2023 Pan Nogi Jiu Jitsu Championships. I can't wait to see what he brings to the table this time. Yeah, he's been in such fine form. I just feel like Dante has really hit his stride as a grappler. A, uh, such a well-rounded competitor, physically very powerful. But I think that whatever happens, you're going to have your hands full going up against anybody from Battle Force. These Kazakh grapplers. And now, ladies and gentlemen, first weight 76 kills category. The fight formula is three rounds of five minutes each. Attention introducing all these sportsmen. In the red corner, he's 28. Height 172 centimeters. Weight 76 kilos. PDGO submission fight by way of Adamas Jiu Jitsu. He is ADCC World Champion Bronze Medalist. Two-time World Nogi Champion, three-time Pan American Champion, who is number one 170 division champion. He's represent GF team, Adamas Jiu Jitsu, and Manolfo team, Toledo, Ohio. Make some noise, Dante Leo. His opponent in the blue corner. Height 175 centimeter, weight in 70 kilos. He's a Chumin's freestyle wrestling master of sport. UWW Grappling World Champion. Two-time UWW Grappling Asian. He's represent battle first team fighter from Kazakhstan. Make some noise. Nurbek Taiburi. Referee in the mat, Damir Sadirov. Okay, okay. All right, there we go. First match is now officially underway. In the green and gold is Dante Leon in the predominantly white rash guard representing okay, Battle okay. Force is Nurbag Talbudin. And as I was saying earlier, Brandon, about how you going up against a Kazakh grappler, maybe Dante doesn't really know too much about his opponent, but as you could hear in the introductions, a UWW World Grappling Champion, a Master of Sport in Freestyle Wrestling, which is a title that you can only achieve by being and having competed in international level wrestling tournaments. So, as you would expect from a Central Asian grappler, very skilled, but... Dante getting in on the leg early. Uses it to sweep and come up. So. Oh, well, tell us a little bit about the way the points work. Well, if we've got time for it, if Dante's slipping time. around towards the back, trying to get on this crucifix, switching off to the Kimura, going after the rear triangle here. This is fast work from Dante. He is wasting no time. We are oh, he's gonna 60 seconds into there this. He is. And it's, there is the triangle being locked up. This is going to be a wrap. Oh, he's, he's going to get it for sure. Side triangle, Americana pressure on the elbow and the shoulder. Somehow, somehow, oh, oh, resisted through that submission, but one minute and 14 seconds into the very first round of the very first match of this seven match series, Dante Leon takes the win by submission. Gave his opponent absolutely no opportunity well, he's got a lot of pressure on his back right here. He really does. He's got to win this for Asai Republic. Otherwise, Dante Leon, Dante Leon takes this. Team Adolfo will be season champions. Kennedy kept hopes alive for Team Asai Republic. And now, Alves. Good sport. Good sport off that shot. And this is Jonathan's world. But Dante is great top and bottom, that is the thing, such a versatile grappler, really has technical, technical skills in every single area, he's a finisher, he's, he can wrestle, he's a guard player, it's unusual to see the complete package, 
in uh, in athletes nowadays. You know, usually you still end up with specialists in one area or another. But Dante, he's like a specialist in every area. Well, he's so good. I was going to say, if there's one thing that is his speciality, it is competing. He's a specialist at competing. Oh. And look at that. Pops the frame off and catches the underhook. Look how quick he goes from zero to 100 right there, too. Oh, he's got you to flatten out. Oh, that was really nice work. He was hanging on to the underhook. And then again, a nice little pop straight down into this underhook cross face. And to be honest, I did not expect to see Jonathan Alves right here in this position this early into the match. He's got the underhook, though. Dante throws on a Kimura, using it to switch off to a leg attack. Alves countering with a leg attack of his own. Dante now turning the corner with the free knee line. Alves going to have to be really careful right here. Yeah, Dante's going to look to spin out. He's got the underhook as well. Alves got the grips that he wants, though. If he can turn the corner, it's just about who gets the hip height battle here. Calma. Smart work by Dante there and just popping off that leg tank and coming on top into the closed guard. And with three seconds away from points being called. Dante Leon, of course, ADCC podium finisher, bronze medal, 2022. Semi-finalist in the uh, previous edition. Nogi world champion, two-time. Just such a great competitor. He's been winning everything. It, it seems like he's been winning at every weight class for the last year. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, you know, we see him down at uh, 76 kilograms now. It's just a shade under 170 pounds. I think he's around about 176, 177, something like that. Um, and he just won, what did he just, Nogi Pans? Yeah. Super heavyweight, yeah, like super yeah. heavy, yeah. which is like 200 to 220 pounds, yeah, something. Yeah. It's it's true savage, yeah. it really is. Yeah. Yeah, we've seen him compete up and down the weight classes over the years, but I think he looks better than ever. I really do. He's just matured so well as a competitor in the last couple of years. You know, there's been some changes. He's still based out of Toledo. Oh, Alves makes a nice play. He's on the knee bar. Knee bar is tight. Man, this is looking like his win yesterday against Rizvanov. That's how he won first round knee bar. I said earlier I didn't think we would see it again, but I was close to being proven wrong right there. Yeah, but he's hanging on to this double outside Ashi. Dante weaving his hand through. He's got the far hip. This could turn into a back attack for him very quickly. Alves has to be very careful. Wants to pass it across to 50-50 to save it. Yeah, I've been talking up Dante Leon so much, I feel a little bit of miss for having not acknowledged just how good an athlete Jonathan Alves is. I mean, we saw it yesterday, quick submission win in his match. Dante Leon also had a quick first round submission, but of course, you know, when we you match together two athletes as, as skilled and as experienced as this, yeah, I didn't expect to see a quick finish, but Jonathan Alves has come the closest to finding anything in this match so far. Dante freezes knee line, looking to counter. Extracts his foot, comes up looking to standing pass, trying to turn the corner. But... And again, trying to snap that hand past. Missed it that time, Alves wrestling up. Dogfight position right here. Yeah, you hear Kennedy saying he's going to try for the Uchimata, so I think Jonathan's actually cautious in coming up. He knows that that wizard kick, wizard kick is waiting for him. Of course, options here, you know, you got the knee tap, you can try and put him down, you can stand, you can go for the single, you can roll through. What would you do right here? I would, I would take that right hand, Alves' right hand, I'd put it behind Dante's leg. And I would try to stop that Uchimata counter and try to circle around towards his back. Big pressure from that wizard in there, yeah. yeah he Alves tried that rolls B back, sweep. yep. And Dante kind of felt that, rolled through with it. And we've basically got three seconds left this match, uh, sorry, this round, first round in this match is over right now. I gotta say, I give round one. Alves. I have to agree. And it's not for lack of activity for, uh, on Dante's part, but that, that 
flash knee bar right there for a second was the only thing that really was significant. Dante didn't really come close to getting a pass. He did have that moment where it was like, you know, well, he had him flattened out, but he didn't have the underhook. Alves had right. the underhook during that moment. So exactly. as soon as Dante started to progress during the guard pass, yeah, here we go. We're going to get a look at it here. This was really nice work. It looked shallow at first. That's the thing. But Dante this, actually oh, this, was the, this was the knee bar. He here. spun into it and, and, and gave him that position. And John's John's strong grip of the uh, of the low the long end of the lever nearly had the knee bar there. But hey, Dante, man, you have to catch him sleeping to, to to get him in a knee bar like that. Well, he almost did catch him sleeping. Not sure he's going to uh, make that same mistake twice, but let's see. Let's see if Alves updates the game plan. Let's see if Dante adjusts. The second round. Man, this would be huge for Asahi Republic. Well, that means it all it would all rest on the final match. If it, right now it's 3-2 in favor of Adolfo. If Dante wins, Team Adolfo are season champions. If John wins, that means it all hinges on the final match. And the final match is the two team captains. And, and it sounds cool when oh, you say their names back to back. Sakoni and Badoni. Two points for Dante Leon. That was a little arm drag Kochi that he finished as a double leg. And that's important. Important to get those points on the scoreboard. Yeah, big play by Dante. Alves trying to drag him into the guard. Do the difference in the knee cut sort of camping position that Dante is employing compared to, let's say, the Universal Fighters we saw earlier, who were like almost two steps back in their knee cut, you know, yeah. in their posture. Dante is so far forward. You know, of course, there is the risk of getting elevated and lifted, but man, he is happy to just stay right in there in the pocket and. He's putting, he's putting Alves under a little bit of pressure right here. You know, that hand in the face is a sign that hey i'm not here to mess around yeah but alves has the underhook okay he's able to use that underhook to dig himself out of the play oh nice leg work there from alves and you know that that's aoj style right there they're just so intricate with their leg work you know you just think of any of the aoj athletes that you've uh, seen in action whether it's Tynan dalpacolo bate or any of the many many other extremely skillful athletes out of that room in Costa Mesa, California, it's what you expect. The guard work is just incredible. Alves framing away on the chin of Dante Leon. He wants to take another run at this knee bar. does, yeah, he had that very low ankle grip and buried it under, into the neck. But there it is again, popping that frame off of Dante Leon. He's got the underhook this time, this is better. Drops his shoulder down now. Head is nearly on the mat. Underhook cross face. Coming through. Is he going to pass? Yes, he is. Big pressure from Dante Leon. Passes into side control. 5-0. And he's working his way around the top position. Could we see him go for the arm bar on the, top, on the far side arm? Man, he's got a lot of time to work. Still a little over two minutes to go. Dante is going to be on the hunt. He wants to put him out of here and close this one out for his team. So strong in this top position is Dante Leon. He's really keeping the pressure all the way through with his shoulder into the jaw of Jonathan Alves. But wow, look at that. They don't mess around here at Iger. Hey, you're not advancing position, you're not attacking. Even if you're in a dominant position, you get hit with a stalling warning. But hey, Dante pops up to knee ride. Can get another two? Back into the guard, not a big deal. 7-0 lead with just over a minute and a half remaining. And maybe attack, we might see Dante attack an uh, arm and guillotine, perhaps, if Alves tries to come up here. What's well, what I was thinking, oh, yeah, exactly. you called it, Brandon. Do you have a crystal ball? But he passes into the mount of it. He's going to score three more. That's Ooh, that's big, and he's looking for a mounted triangle here. He is. He's coming up high. You can see he's got that right arm on the shelf of his thigh. Yeah, he's in that gangster lean, looking to stuff the hand through. There it is. Steps over the left arm of Jonathan Alves. 
Gonna dropping off a little bit here. He's got 55 he's gonna seconds this. to work it. He's going to finish this. Cinches it up. Pulling down on the head. Dante is so strong. No, he's not a hit. He gets the tag. Madonna wins. Dante Leon closes it up. Waves bye bye to Asahi Republic. And they're taking the money back. Every match Team Adolfo have won here so far in this series has been by submission. That is it. Team Adolfo 2023. Aiga Champions League season champions thanks to Dante Leon securing the bag with what a, a beautiful triangle submission. What a clutch performance by Dante Leon. Well, it is academic. <laughs> it is academic at this point. There is one more match to go, but it is done. It is in the bag. Now, the referee Daniel Saderov stop this match and the second round of the submission hold. One sportsman from the red corner, Tante Leon. Four minutes, 15 seconds of the second round. Tante Leon secures the triangle choke and the overall victory for Team Matombo here in the final of the Aiga Champions League in Almaty, Kazakhstan. Look at those scenes in the Team Adolfo quarter brand of the emotion. Incredible. And Dante Leon finally smiles. What do you think, Brian? Now you're kind of speechless right now. Man, I'm, kind, I'm kind of watching the interaction between Madolfo and Asahi Republic here. Isaac Michel and Dante Leon, they had a lot to say. Kennedy had a lot to say. Prado had a lot to say. And let's just take a look at what Dante Leon had to say with his work here. Started out round two with that beautiful double leg. Here we see him stepping all the way around into this guard pass. Such great work. And this was the, you called it, you know, you with that, with that wizard that he had, the, you know, popping on that arm and guillotine and then using that to pass into the mount. And from there, it was all downhill for Alves because Dante Leon just gradually worked his way up into this, dropped off from the mount into the triangle choke. A little adjustment, very strong pull down on the head and Alves had nowhere to go. You know, it wasn't what I would call a perfect triangle choke, but Dante, so strong, he spent so much time working on his strength, spent so much time in the weight room, and it's for moments like this, right here. Just puts that death squeeze and look at the work rate. Doesn't have to be pretty if it gets the job done, and it does right there. Dante Leon gets oh. the submission. Oh, and a little bye-bye to Team Acai Republic.